speech shall be a brief one. I'll forego all thoughts but the chief one. To my host, his prince, and his country, I wish a long and a happy life. To his host, his prince, and his country, I wish a long and happy life. <laughs> I thank you, and I bid you welcome. Your words would not have moved me more. But as a man who loves his country, and as its proud ambassador, may you, my friends from other nations, and enjoy our monarch's bad I'll be who are free at Romanians, Sultars of Red, Ron, and Hope. Now, once again, I bid you welcome. I'm glad you can be in free to see a bit of that Romania. At Romania in Paris. His hospitality is famous. I'm glad I can be in free to see you meet the Ben Romania. Ben Romania. of the celebration of his sublime birthday here in Paris. All hearts are beating with joy, all breasts seem... Oh, you got all that! Oh. Uh, see that the dispatch is sent immediately. At once, Excellency. Oh, be gone, Gascara. Let me thank you again for those generous words. It is always a pleasure to see you. And it is a pleasure to see you looking so unaffected. Hmm? Considering. Uh, Considering? <laughs> then there is no truth to the rumors. And the rumors? <laughs> that your country is on the verge of financial collapse. <laughs> A total fabrication, I assure you. Excellency. Uh, what is it, Negus? You have just received an emergency telegram from His Royal Highness. Uh, my, what a quick response. <laughs> Please excuse me. <laughs> Niegos, you clever lad. You just saved me from a very embarrassing situation. Yes, Excellency, but the telegram. Oh, yes. Yeah. Niegos, summon the Embassy Security Council. Now, it's Now! Clerk, 
with every man in the room. You make me so angry. Don't be ridiculous. And don't leave me alone. But you went alone. Just look how jealous that dumb chrome off is. Your yeah, excellency has even more grounds for jealousy. <laughs> oh, how so? When a man has such a young wife. Oh, well, yes, that, that may be so with other men. There is not a chalice bone in my body. And His Excellency's wife is a paragon of virtue. Well, naturally. Valencienne is, is, she's like a child. You see how innocently she chats with Monsieur de Rosion. Camille, what have you written on my fan? Since you have forbidden me ever to say it to you, I have written it. There. I love you. Oh, my husband. Oh. Uh, Camille, Valenciennes, some fun. Yes, oh, you love it. What do you wish, dearest Miracle? Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, tell me, have you seen uh, Madame Glavary? Has she arrived as yet? No, not yet. Oh, Madame Glavary is in Paris. Uh, oh, yes, and, and I'm expecting her at any moment. Uh, please, uh, little bunny. Would you mind waiting for her in the reception area? Uh, perhaps Monsieur de Rosillon would be good enough to keep you company. Oh, it would be my pleasure. Oh. Au revoir, Your Excellency. Au revoir. <laughs> oh, she has not yet arrived. Glad she's coming here, but she, she would make it. Yes. Twenty millions to be exact, which must never leave the fatherland. Madame Glavary, is she not the widow of your court banker? Exactly. She's the daughter of an uneducated farmer who threw his ears in debt. So he marries a richest man in Petrodenia. And five years later, he dies. <laughs> that, that's how a true gentleman treats his wife. Oh, 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 please. Please. So then she is very young and attractive. She's worth 20 million. Ah, she's very attractive indeed. <laughs> At present, the money is safely in the National Bank of Petrovania. But seems safe enough. Oh, safe. Unless she decides to marry some disreputable Frenchman. But all costs, we must see to it she only marries a disreputable Petrovanian. So, I take it this charming peasant girl has become a woman of great discrimination. <laughs> Hardly. She still speaks with the tongue of a true Petrodenian peasant. As blunt as a potato, and as subtle as a radish. <laughs> and what do you suppose has brought her to Paris? Shopping for a husband, of course. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, dancing has resumed in the ballroom. The top cast it up. I strongly suspect that you have developed quite an interest in this widow. Monsieur saint Brioche, I believe I have just overcome a lifelong aversion to matrimony. Unfortunately, so have I. Negus! Negus! Where are you? Negus! Madame Lavery must not marry a Parisian! No, Excellency. I must find someone who can be. I have it. Count Danilovich. Danilovich? What about him, sir? Oh, find him immediately. He is vital to our plan. For him? Vital? Well, it is he who must now earn for the fatherland 20 million francs. <coughs> earn? You mean by working, sir? Oh, no, you have the wrong man. He's never done anything like that in his life. Well, he will start tonight. Bring him here immediately. Take my carriage. Certainly, Excellency. <laughs> but next. But next, Madame Glavary will arrive, and I won't be here to receive her. <laughs> Quickly, Camille. I know I left it in here somewhere. I just don't remember where it could be. Let's be calm, my darling. We'll find it. If my husband finds that fan, we're ruined. Here it is. Listen, Camille, I must speak to you. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously? To listen, please, while no one speaks. No one's voice I'd rather hear. Camille, it's a serious matter. As is my love and my deep
my darling, no. How can I wear when all that I am is yours alone? Please don't go on. I told you I can't bear to hear such words. Whatever my feelings may be, my marriage is sacred to me. was not at his club. But did you try his mistress? With your permission, Excellency. Which one? Oh, you should have sounded a general alarm. 
what are we going to do on the single solitary occasion when he can be of use to the fatherland? He cannot be found. But, oh, I found him. You did? Where am I? Where? At Maxime's. <gasps> oh, please, your excellency, what a place it is. Naturally, there, there are girls there. I can report on balconies, mezzanines, and the basements. <laughs> Nothing I would dare make home about. Oh, enough! Oh, it was enough! It was enough! <laughs> so I suppose you forgot to deliver my message. Every word of it! I knew it. No, I, I mean I didn't. You didn't give it to him! If it please your excellency, I delivered Count Danilovich the father. Father, land is calling you. Report to the embassy immediately. And what did he say? He, 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 he said my compliments to the fatherland and... Uh, and? He said... And, uh, oh, he said no, take a job. What? Oh, that fool must be out of his mind! Not exactly, sir. He's more like... In what? In created, sir. With your permission. Oh, oh, but after my children, you're extending a personal invitation. And after I held his head under a faucet of water and took Grisette's help to revive him with the massage and black coffee, well, he said it. Oh, everything is black. I can't stand it. Neither could he, sir. But he said he would be here in 15 minutes. Niggles, 20 million is at stake! Report immediately when he appears. Very good, Excellency. <laughs> Fatherland is calling. <laughs> Fatherland is always calling with our millions at stake. Twenty million by the clavery. That's all the commotion. With your permission, Excellency. The clavery. Shining star you are! Is it The brightest of my
you may easily call me Donnie. I have so completely forgotten that name, I no longer even know how to pronounce it. Please go on snoring. Uh, no, 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 please, please. I'm quite awake. Oh, totally awake. Uh, so, your ladyship is in Paris, I see. No, Simsbury, as you can see. <laughs> Do you always ask such intelligent questions? So your ladyship is living in Paris. Oh, my God, as you can see. So what are you doing here? Enjoying life. Catching up with what I missed earlier. Oh, and perhaps getting married. Getting married? Yes. Again? Is it once enough? Oh, had it been up to you, it would have been never. No? Well, had it been up to me, I would not now be the widow of the blessedly departed Mr. Blavity, but the wife of the blessedly living Count Dunn. It was not up to you, but to your blue-blooded benefactor who forbade marriage to a girl who was nothing, and had nothing. Well, my lady, you didn't exactly make much of me either. But uh, got married at the first opportunity to a, to a rich daughter in court bank. No, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh, he was old <laughs> and daughtering. Actually, whom I married is no concern of yours. That's the way it was, so Feeney. And Feeney? He was daughtering. At any rate, now I am a widow. A rich widow. A 
marry Will. Oh, yes, quite marry, in fact. But then again, I've learned a good deal about you men. Now, when you tell me you love me, I'll believe you. And I know you'll mean my millions. No. <laughs> One moment. Uh, joking aside, you can believe me, your millions. Of course. Me well, I guess you just don't know me. A man like all the others. Yes. Yes, you are correct. Entirely correct. And for that reason... For that reason? For that reason, I will never say to you, I love you. Oh, that sounds like a declaration of war. <laughs> well, it's good deal. War it is, my lady. But that's not all there is to that. How could you lose it again, Valencia? How could you write I love you on it? Now it really is lost, and I shall be in so much trouble. Voila! But, oh, thank God. If only you were mine. Then I could shout it from the top of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> but I'm married. And if only you were married to me. Yes. Then what? <laughs> Excuse me, uh, little bunny. Uh, have you seen Count Danilovich? No, Mirko, I haven't. Oh, that useless Niegus told me I'd find him in here. Thank you, Excellency. Oh. Harold, yes. Count. <laughs> As I have some important embassy matters to discuss with the Count. Uh, perhaps Monsieur de Rosillon would be good enough to accompany you back to the ballroom? Oh, it would be my pleasure. <laughs> Now then. <clears throat> so, tell me, Count, how long have you been with the embassy? <laughs> Too long. Four months. <laughs> I see. And, and, and what have you accomplished in that time? Absolutely nothing. Exactly. Uh, what? <laughs> well, I guess I'm just not cut out for a oh, For <laughs> diplomatic work. <laughs> for work of any kind, I'm afraid. No. Actually, in this instance, work of any kind is not necessary. The Fatherland has an important mission for a man of your unique qualifications. I believe you'll find it involves only pleasure. Well, in that case, I'm the man. Of course. If you will, please. Now then. I believe that you have some experience with, um, with women. Uh, it's getting better all the time. Oh, I am pleased to see that you are so enthusiastic. <laughs> of course, you will have to get married. Hold on! I thought you said this involved pleasure. But the fatherland demands it. Oh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Has someone lodged a complaint against me? Oh, nothing of the kind. This is a diplomatic Patriotic matter. Does the fatherland have someone particularly in mind? Oh, absolutely. Is she beautiful at least? Oh, fabulous, fantastic, and also rich. What is her name? Madame Blavary. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. no, 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 never nine yet. Why not? Because, 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 because. Because of my principles. Fall in love, often, and seldom make proposals. <laughs> and never, ever get married. <laughs> not even for the fatherland. No, absolutely not. And that's all there is to say about that. Uh, uh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Daniel, Daniel, listen to me. <laughs> the country is in dire circumstances. Right now, the Glavery millions are safely in Petrovania. The tax revenues account for half the country's income. If Madame Glavery should marry a Frenchman, or any other foreigner for that matter, the money will be lost and the country will be in ruins. We will have to close the embassy and return to Petrovania. Oh my God. Please, Danilo, only you can help us. I beg you! Well, no, 
If it's marriage to an amorous foreigner that you're concerned about, I, I think I can manage to prevent that. I know a few cavalry tactics. Oh, daddy lord, fatherland will be in your debt. Well, that'll be a new experience. Your Excellency, the music has begun again. The dance is laid, choice. Mount your steed, Danilo, for the fatherland! Charge!
my nights and not be mine, then Baron, I hear my reason. Madam, you have to choose now. You surely can't refuse now. Oh, dear, what will you go?
very much. This patriotic gala honoring the fatherland. It, it's so, so patriotic. All these authentic costumes and songs and dances. Oh, oh they're so authentic. They bring tears to my eyes. It pleases me to see that you are so, so... Patriotic, Excellency. I couldn't have said it better myself. Silvio, oh. Silvio! <laughs> I am pleased that you are so taken with my Petrovanian celebration, but tonight I intend to be entirely Parisian. Oh, Excellency, oh, are you all right? It's a little surprise for Count Daniel. Oh, really? I understand that he's a frequent visitor at Maxime's, so I have arranged to recreate that famous establishment in another part of the embassy. Complete with grisettes. But the grisettes here? With your permission, Excellency. Lolo, Dodo, Jojo, Glock, and Maragoy. Woo! 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 I arranged it all. Neighbors, how could you? How did you? Just look at him, Excellency. Who could resist such charm? <laughs> I'm sure that everything he does, he does well. Uh, au revoir. Oh, au revoir, au revoir. <laughs> well, what do you think? I beg your pardon, sir? She is interested in the count. So it seems, Your Excellency. So, where is he hiding? Where is he hiding? Yes. Where is he hiding? Where is he hiding? Yeah. Yeah. He says he needs this gala like a hole in the head. So he owes it to the fatherland. He owes that much? Well, he owes an appearance. He said that no ten oxen would drag him here, <sighs> even if you are among them. What? He is not coming? Not coming, he said. No, 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 no. That is an insult. It's vulgar, sir. Praise the fatherland, Excellency. Here I am. Oh, my dear Count, I was under the impression that ten oxen couldn't drag you here. Well, Excellency, if you are present... Oh, hey, no, no, surely. Hey. In any case, I am pleased to see that you are wearing your military uniform. <laughs> you will make a handsome escort. For some lucky widow. Excellency, let me remind you. I know, I know, I know. You've promised to keep all dangerous foreigners at a distance. Yeah, but your tactics are not working so brilliantly. And just who has been able to circumvent my defenses? Count de Rosio. Amigo. Oh, I don't believe it. Neither do I. Oh, why not? He's the best looking man in Paris. Also the best rest, and first of all, he's always in debt. Besides, he's a bachelor. Yes, but I happen to know he's already in love with a married woman. Oh, with a bag of stagers, who is she? Who? Who? You know who well, she I, is. I know who she is. Well, he didn't actually tell me her name, sir. Uh, we'll have to try her through diplomatic channels. Um, when we find her, we'll force her to marry him. The mere threat of marriage is enough to discourage Camille. But uh, just what is the poor woman's husband going to say about this? Oh, the husband? <laughs> I shall deal with him personally. <laughs> Obviously, the man's an ass. Now, I suggest that the, uh, what are you, why are you looking at me like that? I, I, I wasn't looking at you like that, sir. What do you suggest? Uh, that my wife be persuaded to work under Rosio's feelings. She seems to have some influence over him. And uh, you, you are again looking at me like that. What is going on here? I'm, 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 go on talking, sir, and I'll just look away. But I see it must persuade the Rosion to renounce his feelings for the widow and marry the married woman he really loves. That shouldn't be too difficult. No, quite simple, sir. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was that dumb Kromos spy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, let us keep our eyes open and meet here in the pavilion at seven o'clock and plan our next moves. As your excellency wishes. The pavilion at seven. Shop! <laughs> What's this? 
Ah, looks like an old friend. I love you. <laughs> Still faithful. <laughs> ah, ha! Just it. You did come after all. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Well, I felt a need to sample real Petrovanian atmosphere. Oh, but I feel you've been avoiding me all day and all evening. Why? The tactics, or the war, you know, that, that's why. Oh, of course, the war, I almost <laughs> forgot. I've been in a skirmish with the light cavalry. Yes, but, but, a brave officer doesn't skirmish. He attacks boldly. Indeed. I would love to attack, fiercely attack. So do it. <laughs> well, it's not always uh, the best tactic for a horseman to ride directly into the thick of battle. <laughs> Such a dumb horseman. What makes you say that? I love you. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. Is this a diplomatic matter? Of the greatest delicacy, why are you giving me that look? I'm sorry, it's a problem I seem to be having today. 
I can't say. Uh, perhaps you could uh, assist me in a little uh, diplomatic detective work, huh? Hide over there and make a note of everything that happened. Okay? Ah, Madame Kromov. I was hoping to see you this evening. I believe you may have lost something. Lost, Count Lillibit? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, uh, a token of someone's affection, perhaps? Oh, I can't imagine what it might be. Or well, perhaps this will fan your curiosity. Oh, <laughs> let me see. I love you. Hmm? What a delightful thought, but no, it's not my fan. Ah, okay. Mm. Mm. Uh, by the way, I... Don't suppose you've seen Monsieur Saint Brioche anywhere about? Not in the past few minutes. Although, uh, earlier, and this is just uh, entre nous, as they oh. say, I believe I overheard him proposing marriage to Madame Glavery. What? Oh, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for an appointment. <laughs> Au revoir. Wait till I get my hands on him. Very interesting. Shh, here comes another. Ooh. Ah, Count Danilovich. Good evening. Mm. Lovely evening for a stroll in the garden, don't you think? Undoubtedly, madame. And yet, one must be very careful. It would be an easy matter to lose something in this garden. Oh, surely not I. But what have you there? Uh, well, uh, only this lady's fan. Perhaps it is yours, madame. Oh, but I have my fan. Right. Where did you find that one? Near that grove. I, I thought I overheard a gentleman proposing marriage to the widow. But when I got there, both of them had disappeared, and, well, only this fan remained. Oh, surely not You Kuskada. know, it may have been Koskada. Oh? <laughs> really, can't be absolutely sure of that, but... Uh, Madame Bogdanovich, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> she certainly left in a hurry. With your permission, Count. This is getting more and more interesting. Yes, but I never would have believed it. Count, there is it enough. Oh. Mm. oh, good evening, Count Danilo. Ah, Madame Preachy. And what are you doing strolling in the garden at this time of night? I was just searching for the owner of this trinket, Madame. Perhaps you will. Simply not. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, but you would not believe the sort of information it has helped me to uncover. Ooh. Stick around. You might just be amazed at what turns up. Count! I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Renounce the widow. I wield a fine blade. And I, sir, shoot a very precise shot. You renounce her. I think we're about to witness some very interesting new developments. Vicomte Cascada. Would you care to step behind the pavilion? After you, sir. Well, 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 gentlemen, gentlemen. <laughs> Looks as though you two are in for a bit of scuffling. Please, please, please don't be embarrassed. I've been meaning to talk to Madame Glavity about you two gentlemen. About me? me? About both of you. Madame Glavity has to know. But uh, there may well be a duel this evening between Viscount Cascada and, beg your pardon, Gaspodin Bogdanovich. Bar 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 because I know all about you and his wife. 
And if you do not renounce the widow... Renounce? Oh, I renounce? <laughs> you laugh. There is more. Come closer, I have something agreeable for you two. Oh, for this, yes. Madame de Lavery should know, don't you think, that there may well be a duel this very night be between you and Gaspard Oh, oh no, 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 see, you don't understand. Oh, well, well, I, I know all about you and Oh, no, 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 no. no. And in the event that. that you do not renounce the widow, I renounce, shall be forced to tell Mr. Promo. I renounce. Gent, ah, please, one moment. Hey! Perhaps you had better tell the Baron to come here. Yes, Count. Oh, that's you. Oh, well, we were just discussing a very delicate matter with these two gentlemen. An important question. How should a married man behave when his esteemed wife is a bit of a chief? Oh, that's simple enough. I would kill the bomb. I would break his neck. I'll renounce. I'll renounce. Thank you. And uh, you? Oh, oh, yes, yes, I'll renounce. <laughs> I thought so. So, uh, what are you gentlemen discussing? Hmm? How a married man behaves when his esteemed wife trespasses on the vows of matrimony. <laughs> oh, thank God. That is one situation I don't have to worry about. <laughs> He will always keep you resting, never knowing what she thinks. How to get her, how to get her, to be made for how indeed there are theories in plenty, but none that are guaranteed. With one you have to sing her praises, cross and so and cross and so, and honeymoons and tender praises, cross and so and cross and so, still others want to respond. Thus and so, and thus and so, much prefers assault and battery. Thus and so, and thus and so, a third adores to her, you pet her. Thus and so, and thus and so, a fourth prefers a car of matter. Thus and so, and thus and so, still others like it when you bite them. Thus and so, and thus and so. And on and on. Alas, with a bow in her hand, which he had been torn for the innocent rest. When she will boil with dispatch, and it blot you a hat, little man, you're a bad, you're a match.
when the band plays a waltz in three-quarter time, three-quarters of one's modesty are forgotten. Tell me. 
Please will never do. Seven o'clock precisely. Where is Danilo? Undependable as always. So, what are you waiting for? Open the pavilion. Uh, whoa! Yeah, your permission. Shouldn't we wait for Count Danilovich? What for? He knows where the meeting is to be held. Negos, you have my permission to open the pavilion. Yes, with your permission. This is impossible. Not possible? Why? The pavilion is open. Oh, very well. No, it's not open. Oh, occupy. Occupy? How? A lady. A lady? Yes. But whether she is still a lady, who knows? From the way you are talking, I think I know who is in this with her. The count. No, Monsieur de Rossillon. What? I the count of the Great country. heavens! You, you said he was in love with, with a married woman. Negos, the pavilion has a back door. Go and lock it immediately. Yes. First, let them out. Count. Greetings, Excellency. Am I late? Count, Count, the Rossillon's lady has been discovered. Bravo. Oh. Amazing. Who is That I don't know yet. Well, <laughs> They're in the pavilion. Yes, yes, she is with him. <laughs> oh, I had the other door locked. Good. Now I'll listen. <laughs> no, uh, Excellency, uh, listening is not proper. <laughs> but one can hear better. That, that's true. <laughs> I, I can peek through the keyhole. Keyhole peeping is not proper either. Excellency. But one can see so much better. <laughs> All right, all right. I can't see her face. Well, where is it? Where is it? Where do you think it is? Excellency, let me. No, 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 no. I want to find her out. I bet it's that dumb Chromos wife. Dumb Chromos wife. Now, look again. When you recognize her, simply yell, ha, yeah, not yeah. Ha! Oh, what he is doing to her. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Excellency. I know, I know, I know. Ha, not, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Good show. Who is it? My wife. Ha. I'm the dumb Kromov. <laughs> well, Excellency, there, there, there is one consolation. Consolation. You're suffering for the fatherland. Damn the fatherland! Couldn't have said it better myself. Open up! Open up! Open up there! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! No, I'm not blind. I saw them well. Ha ha ha! I'm Camille. I'm simply thunderstruck. She has confounded me again. But where's Valenciennes? My sanity is gone. When I was being, being through that keyhole there, I clearly saw a woman's face. Really wasn't very nice. And through what the door, I, I heard so. this gentleman sincerely vowing his lasting love. Don't leave me, that was I. And I would have sworn it was my wife I saw. For you see, you can hear it's time to forgive. Like I saw, I was a man for success. Three. 
This can't go on. We have to stop at once. But if we do, we'll expose ourselves. You're getting mad. You're not serious. Indeed, I am. I must look deaf, and so does he. Do. No, not at all. I have no reason to. I give you both my bread and kitchen. Oh, yet still and all. I think I ought to mention that I'm speaking as a diplomat when I observe that marriage has gone out of fashion. Alliances for two wifers to quickly make a third when one of the partners feels a dwindling Passion. Still speaking diplomatically, there is a certain policy I think you may have heard it mentioned. We use the phrase the open door. Whom that phrase describes the boudoir to wear is not a crime, but, harm, but something worse. A waste of time, madame. My marriage will be. Oh, 
Magnus, are you sure he will go? With your permission, Excellency, what choice does he have? When he gets to Maxim's, Count Danilovich will discover that the personnel, the patrons, and the grisettes have all come here for the evening. He has no other choice. All the grisettes? With your permission, Excellency. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. has organized the ladies of the assembly as honorary grisettes. Well, in Valencia! Oh, 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 The guest of honor no. has arrived. Oh, oh, I can't believe all this! <laughs> I'm so pleased that you could come to see what we have arranged for you. <laughs> you are like a son to me. Please, come, sit down. Oh, Perry, one, one moment. This is absolutely... Oh, of course! Absolutely! <laughs> and here he goes the entertainment, and it better be good. Absolutely, <laughs> Excellency. <laughs> Unforgettable. <laughs> With your permission, ladies and gentlemen, lay grease it! <laughs>
my fatherland afar. Very nice the ladies are. And the native dance is a noble sport. Done in skirts that I have fair court. But the little girls in France are the ones I take to dance. <laughs> They are all so chic in the dirty cream, kicking up our sherry. Quite a bummer. Another lady. Another lady? A married lady. 
To help her out of an embarrassing situation, I offer to act as substitute to protect the husband. And the husband must be yeah. Oh. Oh. Dear God, and you didn't tell me? Well, I suffered tortures of hell and damnation. But why? Well, because. Open your mouth and tell me already that you love me. Anna. Yes. Anna. I. Yes. Anna. Anna, I. Anna, I. Anna, I. Doesn't want to come out. So sing it to me already. announcement to make. <laughs> Madame Gravity is going to marry Monsieur de Rossillon. <laughs> Never. <laughs> come, come. You do have great diplomatic skill after all. Sibiel, <laughs> Sibiel! But how can she not marry him? After being so, so compromised. Not at all. Madame Gravity was not compromised one bit. She was protecting another woman. Married woman. Oh. Olga! <laughs> oh, Valencia, did you hear? Madame Glavary is not going to marry De Rosillon. It seems she never had a rendezvous with him. That she was protecting another woman, a married woman. Oh, and I need time to think. <laughs> Excellency, this man was found in the pavilion. Oh. Yes, the pavilion. This is my wife's handwriting. 
So it was my wife after all. Oh. Madame, I demand a divorce. Oh. Uh, Madame Flavery, I, I am now a free man. Oh. <laughs> in the name of this part of land, I humbly request your hand in marriage. He certainly doesn't waste any time. Your Excellency, I am touched by your proposal. However, your concerns for the fatherland are misplaced. I must tell you quite frankly that according to the will of my late husband, if I remarry, I forfeit the entire fortune. Oh! Then I shall no longer trouble you. <laughs> oh, Baron, you've been no trouble. Honey, does this mean you have no fortune? Nothing at all. Anna, Anna. Oh. Will you marry me? Finally. Oh. Excuse me. Excuse me? Do, do, then do you mean to say that you have no millions? No. But what will I tell you, Prince? The fatherland! You have no millions, darling! Yes, 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 Excellency. Yeah. If I marry, I forfeit the entire fortune. Yes. To my new husband. Oh. Anna, you are such a sweet swindler. <laughs> I would marry you even if you had 40 million. <laughs> This, this, this damn fan! If it wasn't for this fan, we would have had a happy ending! Mirhoff, before you get so upset, perhaps you should read what is written on the other side of the fan. I remain a dutiful wife. Aww. Then? That's all I could ever ask for. Funny! On the study of feminine things. It's a man in a permanent phase. You can think till your brain badly swells. Thanks to her.
Commission, ladies and gentlemen, Le Grisette! <laughs> Mine are the steadiest nerves. Oh, 